Hi guys, all right, so we are on the last activity for lesson 3.2. Um, so we were just looking at our mountain model from before, um, which was showing the cotton balls coming off of our mountain, representing tiny pieces of rock coming off over time. So we were just talking about why it is so hard to tell whether I removed a pom-pom or not, and it is because in a huge, huge, huge mountain, if we're taking just one tiny pom-pom off, you're not really gonna notice a huge change. Because again, just like with a mountain, we would not notice one tiny piece of rock eroding off of the mountain. Um, we also know that this takes a really long period of time because just like in our um, investigation video, we know that as we take one pom-pom off, that's representing 50 years of rain eroding that bit of rock off. So another thing we're focusing on is if we need to change our maps. And based off of just taking two pom-poms off of our mountain model, we would not need to go back and revise our maps because it's not that big of a change to where anybody would notice just from looking at it, which means we would not need to change our map yet. So how can we explain what happened over a long period of time so that now we are able to see these changes? So we might not be able to notice a tiny piece of rock coming off every few days. But after a long period of time and lots of little bits of rock have eroded or fallen off of the mountain due to rain, we will eventually be able to see a change in the shape of our mountain. But again, this will take a lot of time because as we take a pom-pom off, that's 50 years. So if you're thinking about all the pom-poms that we have on this plate, that is a lot of years of bits of rock or pom-poms being taken off of our mountain in order to see a really big change. So again, we would notice a change, but it would take a really long time. So you will notice that in your packet, there is a second worksheet that looks very similar to the one that we filled out at the very beginning of this lesson. So you guys are gonna color in the map key, same colors as the first worksheet that you worked on, and then you are gonna draw a new map to show how small changes can add up to a big change over time. So in this, box right here, I want you to draw a picture of what you think the mountain would look like after maybe thousands and thousands of years of bits of rock eroding off. So you can go ahead and pause this video and work on completing this worksheet and then when you are all done you can come back to the video to finish up this lesson. Okay, so we're thinking about how the mountain model is similar to the real world and how it is different. So before I go ahead and talk about that, I want you guys to pause the video and write down any similarities and differences that you see between our mountain model and a real mountain in your packet. If you do not have a packet, you can talk to somebody at home or just think about it in your head really quick. Some things that I'm thinking are similar between our model and a real mountain is that um, the shapes are pretty similar. So just like in this picture, that's kind of like a real mountain where you're gonna have a higher peak and then kind of a higher, more elevated area going down to a lowland area. Another thing that's similar is the idea of each pom-pom or cotton ball representing a small piece of rock because in this mountain, if we're taking one pom-pom off, it's not going to cause a huge change or not something that you would no notice from looking. Um, and that's the same with the mountain. As a tiny piece of rock comes off, we're not necessarily going to notice it when we're looking at the mountain. Some differences that I'm noticing between the two is that obviously our model is made out of soft cotton balls, whereas a mountain is much harder because it's made out of rock. Um, another difference that I'm thinking of is that we're using our hands to take the pom-poms off of our models, whereas when erosion happens on a mountain, it's normally caused by something else, like maybe weather, but it, it would not happen just from somebody, you know, taking a tiny rock off of a mountain and throwing it. Okay, so we're moving on to our very last part of the lesson, which is considering scale in the mountain maps. Geologists use the word scale when they are discussing how big or small something is. Our idea about what could be observed on our map has to do with scale. We did not draw new maps after the first small change, and we only drew new maps once the change was on a large enough scale to be observed. And you guys um, were doing that based off of what you think it would look like if we took a lot of the pom-poms off of our model. So what kind of scientists might think about scale in their work? 
So there are lots of different scientists that will have to think about this. And remember, scale is taking something bigger and trying to think about a way to show it on a smaller, in a smaller way. So when I'm thinking about this, I might think about plant scientists might have to do this, um, space scientists might have to do this, um, maybe scientists that are looking at fossils are people that will have to think about scale when they're doing their work. So I want you to think about one of the scientists that I just talk about, talked about, plant scientist, space, fossils, or if you have a different one in mind, you can do that one. And I want you to think of some things that this scientist might need to study at a very small scale and some things that they might need to study at a very large scale. When I'm thinking about small scale and space, we're thinking about if they're studying something about a planet, they're not going to be able to take an entire planet and bring it here to look at it. So they're going to need to look at that on a smaller scale. Whereas if we're thinking about fossils, some fossils are really, really small, and they might need to think about it on a bigger scale to better investigate about it. So in our next lesson, we're going to build on our understanding of scale to also include how fast or slow something can happen. So I will see you guys for lesson three for chapter three. Have an awesome rest of your day.